Our next artist is David Brooks. He's not only an artist, but he also is a musician. Um, I know he plays the piano. I don't know if he plays other instruments, but I know he plays the piano. And quite well, I should say. <laughs> at the age of five, David's creative talents first emerged while seated at the keyboard of a piano. He studied and played as a classical pianist and then opened to the influence of jazz and following his heart's desire to explore the arts. David studied painting, sculpturing, and ceramics at the California College of Arts and Crafts. His ever-present partner in co-creating each piece is the spirit of divine love. He says, something shows us to express this creative force within me so it can then reach out and touch you. In quiet meditation, he often sees completed paintings in, in his mind. Many of David's pieces incorporate recycled and reclaimed products. He's been known to give new life to old sheet music, newspapers, rags, recycled house paints, and even use old card tables as a painting format. Each of David's pieces expresses an aspect of divine essence made with love. Each one is destined to bring you hours of joy. And David's um, two pieces of artwork is the last two on this wall behind you. And without further ado, David Brooks. Thank you. Wow, we have a lot in common here. Uh, I uh, work on many paintings at one time. I can't work on just one. I've got to have four or five going at the same time. I use uh, lots of different materials. Uh, it kind of pains me to hear you go to the store and buy Liquitex. I have not bought any paint in 30 years. I go to the uh, household hazardous waste collection out in Martinez, and I use house paints, acrylic. It's, <laughs> it's good stuff. I'm going to set this down here. And um, I paint on uh, pieces of plywood. I paint on card tables. I, you know, nothing is safe around, uh, around my studio and my house. I will paint on everything. Um, if I'm driving down the street and I I see something land by the side of the road. I throw it in my truck and bring it home, and uh, I look and ask, uh, "What would you like to be?" You know, and uh, so I, I use it in my uh, my collages, uh, my paintings, my sculptures, my mobiles. Uh, I've taken old pianos apart and used the the hammers and the keys uh, to make mobiles. I create. Instruments. You might be interested, uh, Michael, in some guitars that I've made. You can't play them, but you can have a lot of fun playing air guitar with them. And some of them are quite dangerous. I uh, actually had to go to uh, uh, what hospital was I with John Muir to get a tetanus shot because one of my guitars uh, bit me. <laughs> So uh, let's see, it says I went to Arts and Crafts. That was back in the 60s. Uh, it was uh, really a lot of fun, really a lot of fun there. They had uh, a lot of neat painters in the uh, uh, English department. Uh, had Michael McClure was teaching English there. And, uh, really, really a lot of fun. It was the, the good old hippie days. Uh, my largest painting is uh, down in Mexico. It's on the side of a uh, house. It's uh, eight feet tall and 12 feet wide. And it's uh, a painting done all in triangles, three inches high. And for me, uh, a, a painting uh, can be an out of the body experience. Uh, I remember painting on it for three days, almost solid during the daylight hours. And uh, I'd be painting, and I'd be on the ladder, and I'd be painting and painting, and, and you step back, yeah, and you look at it, and, and maybe you paint for four or five hours, and you get so out of your body that when you set the paintbrush down, you realize, oh, man, I've really got to go to the bathroom, or I'm really hungry. Uh, you know, it, it's really an out-of-the-body experience. Uh, it can be. Uh, I too see paintings in uh, my meditations. I, I spend a lot of time meditating. And uh, I will see a painting complete. <laughs> it's just an 
really a cool thing. Uh, then you just have to go to the studio, stretch out a canvas, and just recreate it. It's almost like copying a painting that you see uh, out of a gallery. Sometimes uh, painting can be a real struggle. Uh, uh, it puts me sometimes in a state of uh, metaphysical distress. You're working on a painting, everybody else comes up and goes, oh, it's beautiful, and you go, no, it just is not right. There's something missing. And uh, it's a very personal experience. And I remember one time uh, when I was going to CCAC, trying to finish up a painting, and it just would not click. I went to bed, fell asleep. Four o'clock in the morning, I saw the painting in this dream completed. I jumped out of bed, ran into the studio, which was in the garage, and I was living uh, at home, and I started painting, and my mom comes out, and she was just a a tremendous support in my artistic endeavors. But she wanted to know what was going on. It's four o'clock in the morning. David, what are you doing out here? I got it, Mom, I got it. You know, and she was really kind of excited that I, uh, you know, that I found the solution to the problem. And uh, sometimes when I'm stuck on a painting, I'll go to the piano to relax. And the, and the piano music will, uh, soften me up and uh, I'm able to receive what it is that I need to find to finish the painting. And it works the other way around. I'll be composing music and there's a, uh, a passage that just doesn't, what's that lost chord? What's that, you know, what's that magic chord? You don't want to make it sound like every other song. So I'll go to my paintings and I'll start drawing just uh, with no intent. I'll let the colors, I'll let the, the medium, the fabric or whatever I'm using just speak to me and it'll tell me what it wants to do. And that's a very relaxing thing. So my painting and my art uh, uh, are, are both valuable in letting me evolve as an artist. One helps the other and... Uh, <laughs> My, uh, uh, these two paintings that are way down here at the end were uh, just kind of afterthoughts. Uh, they're the ones that were ongoing when I would have uh, a little bit of material left over. I'd walk over and I would just like, not slap it on, but carefully, you know, I just, with no intention of what it was gonna look like, I, I just put little colors on there and Basically, they're, um, they're the warm colors with a little highlight, excuse me, they're the cool colors with a little highlight of the, uh, of the warm. And uh, in my training, uh, I found, as in my, uh, my uh, piano, I learned the classics, and I learned the scales, and I learned the technique, and then, uh, and the discipline, and that's allowed me the freedom to just jam and play, you know, whatever I, whatever I want, whatever I hear. And also, the training that I got at CCAC, uh, the compositions and the colors and the balance, that has allowed me the freedom to really be free and not be thinking about, you know, composition. I just, I just try to emulate nature. You know, when leaves fall off a tree, you look at the pattern, it's, it's a random pattern and I'm really into that randomness. I'm really into letting the accidents happen. Um, <laughs> I paint on, I paint on uh, easels. I also do a lot of paintings on the ground. And uh, in one particular painting, I'm looking at the sun here. Uh, there was a window with uh, six panes of glass and the, and the light was shining on the floor. And I threw my canvas down and I thought, whoa, look at that. So I go, well, I'm, I'm gonna use the, uh, the shadow from the window to make my composition. And as I, I just traced the, uh, 
the, uh, the lights that were on the canvas. And my goodness, by the time I'd done, the, the sun had moved and those little, uh, those six pieces of sunlight had moved a little bit. So I, I, I traced it again. Canvas was quite large. And as it went off the canvas, I started painting on the floor and it went on from the floor and it went up the wall. And I just followed this. Uh, I mean, the canvas was just a little piece of the painting. The painting went off on the floor and up the wall. It's, a, it's just a happening thing. It's, uh, we're all co-creators. You know, I didn't make the red paint. I didn't make the blue paint, the yellow paint. I'm just a co-creator. I find this stuff. I put it on the canvas. And we talk about abstract. It's white. It's, you know, what's abstract about it? <laughs> Could it be that it's not abstract, that there is no abstract? Every painting in here, you can define, you can see it's red paint and yellow paint and purple paint and canvas and oil pastels. And what's abstract about that? If it is abstract, maybe everything is abstract. The light off of your purple uh, shirt there is uh, something that happened in the past for me because that light, right, travels from her shirt to my eye. So I'm seeing how that shirt was. I really can't see how it is. Even if I get closer, I'm getting pretty close to the now, but I still see it as it was. Maybe that's what abstract is. I'm kind of head tripping here. <laughs> Any questions? No, no, I paint with everything. But uh, a lot of my paintings uh, I have done with triangles. My smallest painting is about two inches by three inches and probably has uh, a couple hundred triangles in it. So I like to go to like the extremes, you know, and everything in between. But the triangles give a, uh, when you put a bunch of triangles together, uh, and if you look at that, you'll see that it creates cubes and it gets very three-dimensional and it starts flipping around. You think you've got the stairs going up and then all of a sudden the stairs flip around and come down or you know, whatever you see in it. So it's a very, uh, kind of a, your perspective uh, changes depending on how you hang that painting too. And there's no right side up for for any of my paintings. Uh, well, so I do some representational, but a lot of it is <laughs> abstract. If there is, if there is such a thing, yeah. And they were abstract. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe abstract is only in the mind, you know. Uh, but yeah, when you look around at this, it's, uh, it's their paintings, their canvas, their color. Uh, everything you can define, just about everything. And I really like this one right back here. Uh, I see a face in there, and that's, I just have to comment on that one. That's, that's, that's really a nice one. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Yeah. So what is your intent on your painting? Um, if it's not to be representational, so what, what are you... I, my intention is to experience the process and, you know, my paintings are never done. They're never done. You know, those paintings back there, they could come home with me and I could look at it and I'd go, ah, oh, I'm going to add a little more. In fact, you are in danger of having a painting that you've purchased be in my possession and it's going to come back to you different. It's, uh, you know, um, I will do that. I'm the artist. I can do anything I want with it. I, I, uh, I don't know when a painting is done. You know, if it has to be hung, I try to let it dry before I put it on a gallery wall, but sometimes 
you know, they're, they're still moist uh, when I bring them in. But my intention is to uh, just have the experience of uh, letting this painting e just evolve itself. And I go along for the ride. I'm, I'm the interpreter.